everyone. Welcome to the Rose Hip Island Video Diaries. This is the June video for 2022. Welcome everyone. My name is Hannah and I record from the northern part of Tasmania in Australia. And um, my videos are a catch up about mostly my knitting, but also some other making things that I've been up to. This is an opportunity for me to sit down with a nice drink and uh, talk about things that I enjoy, love and that I'm passionate about. And I am just so happy that there are some of you out there that enjoy spending some time with me and like to follow along with me in my making. So thank you so much for joining me here. I am in my studio as I normally am. But um, it is middle of winter here and the days um, are a bit shorter and we haven't had much luck with sunshine in the last little bit. So to get a video out there with sort of okay quality, uh, I decided to just move a bit closer to the window here in my studio. So that's why it's looking a little bit different. And I hope that the quality of the video will be uh, okay uh, to watch <laughs> for you. I know that, um, yeah, it is it is tricky sometimes to get good quality. And I'm working with sort of um, limited equipment and stuff. I'm just recording on my phone. I have a small little ring light. And yes, I am a little bit dependent on natural light from outside so let's see how we go hopefully it will be fine another thing that i have done to hopefully improve the quality in the conditions that i'm currently working with here is that i'm working from the rear camera on my phone uh, which means that i can't really see what i'm doing but i can see it on my watch so maybe every now and then i'll just sort of have a look and make sure that I'm actually in frame and, and things like that. I know that you get better quality in the rear camera, but I prefer using the front camera because then I can actually see what I'm doing. And normally it's fine if I have enough light from outside. But anyway, that's today's setup. <laughs> Again, welcome everyone, new returning viewers. I'm so happy to catch up with you today. A few things have happened since I last sat down and recorded. Um, I don't think I need to say this anymore because I say it every time, but things are busy. And yes, still busy, but I can see the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. I know that um, a lot of things are coming to the end, end of being busy. So that's really great. And I am really, really looking forward to some annual leave in the beginning of July, which, you know, can't come fast enough, but also I have a lot to do before then. So, um, but I know that it's coming and I am so going to enjoy having, really having time off for a couple of weeks, which would be great. Um, the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about that has happened since last time is that I was fortunate enough to join the yarn retreat that was held in Lomsiston here in Tasmania. And um, it's very, very close to where my home is. So I had a, um, a day pass. It's a, I think, four day retreat. And it was at the Silos Hotel in Launceston. And I had a day pass for the Saturday. And I was um, joining a workshop that I didn't really know anything about before I joined. I'll, I'll talk more about that when I show some of my projects that I'm working on. And then I was only going to stay until mid-afternoon. But it was such a, a wonderful, wonderful event, which... And, you know, with so many great people and being where I am, you don't often get opportunities for events like this and meeting all the amazing people in the, the yarn universe. <laughs> um, 
So I actually stayed on for the afternoon and then I stayed on for the dinner on the Saturday night and I had the best time and um, I came back on the Sunday as well. So yes, I uh, deserted the family for the whole weekend in the end and I, I was at the silos for the event all Saturday most of Sunday came home to sleep, <laughs> you know, between. And Sunday night, I was exhausted. I was so exhausted. And that whole week at work after, I was still exhausted because I didn't get my normal sort of catching up with sleep and quiet time on the weekend that I normally need. But it was great. It was wonderful. Uh, on the Sunday, I was also able to do another class. I'll show you some a little bit of that also later on so that's sort of a main thing that has happened since i last did the video and uh, i i did not really know what to expect for the retreat and be, with it being so close to me and me not really needing to stay overnight um i wasn't sure if it would be worth coming for the day you sort of lose some of the the whole idea of a retreat when you're totally away from home but it was really really good i'm so happy that i decided to go i had some some good input from friends before that had been to some of the other um retreats that um with the by the same organizer so that's kylie of yan creative I think on Instagram anyway it's the yarn retreats uh, that are in a few places around Australia so if you got if you get an opportunity to go even just for a day um, I highly recommend it the the workshops were all fabulous and all the people were great and it was just a really nice environment to spend um, a weekend at away from you know normal everyday life so if you get a chance to go, I do recommend it. And I am pretty certain that I will be at the, the Launceston Yarn Retreat again in 2023. So I'm looking forward to that. So let's start talking about the knitting that I have been doing. And first of all, as you can see, I am wearing the jumper that I had finished, only just finished in my last video. This is a jumper made with the pattern stripes by Andrea Maori, and of course I have not put any stripes into this jumper. I made it all in one yarn and that's the Debbie Bliss Donegal Tweed I think. It's a wool and cashmere yarn. Very very nice, I love it. It's, I made it on 2mm needles because I'm a very loose knitter and it's quite a thin yarn. And um, I made it all straight in the sleeves with a little bit of a decrease before I did the cuffs. And um, it's quite long in the sleeves, quite long in the body. It's just straight. I like how this sits on me and it's just a very comfortable, easy to wear garment. And the yarn makes it even more so because it's very light and... Um, easy to wear and last time I talked about this when I had finished it I mentioned that I had made a another uh, jumper in a yarn that is very similar to this but in a hot pink and the yarn that I used was a pickles tweet and I actually brought it with me to show this time this is it and I made this this was just a um, easy top down raglan jumper and um, I think it was by Pickles and the yarn is also a Pickles tweed. Pickles is a Norwegian yarn company and they also have lots of patterns so I just followed that and it has a folded neckline which is just I don't really like the look of that in this yarn and it's also really really big so based on what I learned from making this, I knew that this yarn would be more suitable um, in a more tighter fitting neck 
uh, only a single layer neckline and I also know from this that it's quite wide and, and big over the, the neck and the shoulders so having the circular yoke construction just fits my um, shoulders better and and I was right um, I do wear this quite a bit at home because it is a very comfortable weight of yarn for a jumper and it, it's just because it's one color it's 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 really um, easy to wear with lots of different things but it has that bit of interest because it is a, a tweed with different colors in the little nips so um, yeah I learned I learned from this one I still wear it a lot but I think this one will be even more useful and you know something that I actually wear possibly at work uh, because I've been wearing most of my knitted jumpers at work now winter and I think this will be really really good for work as well as you know for home or or anything so I'm super happy super super happy with how this turned out I do have another project that you have seen many times and is almost finished but not quite but I figured it's so close to being finished that I will share it with you now one last time and then I will not bring it up again and that's my socks my only socks that I have ongoing at the moment and it's these Normal vanilla with the fish lips kiss heel, stripy sock. It's a patent nail yarn. I love the patent nail yarn. It's super hardy and, and long wearing. Goes in the washing machine, wear it, and it's it's fantastic. Um, but it's also really nice and soft. So yes, it's the patent nail. And I don't think you can get it anymore. I'm not sure. Um I've had this in my stash for quite some time. I still have lots left. So I did have one finished. I've had one finished for a while. And now I only have the, the last bit of the toe to finish on this one. So they have been my work eating. I brought them home to finish them off. And then I don't know. Then... After this, I won't have any socks or any small projects on the go. So I don't know if I will choose another sock yarn in my stash and cast on another pair of socks. Because I do have all that sock yarn and there's always times when sock is just the best knitting. So even if my sock knitting, sock knitting is going much slower at the moment, um, that doesn't matter, I guess. It, it can take... A long time that's fine I don't need to make 15 pairs of socks in a year if I make three pairs or four pairs that's great as well and talking about socks actually reminds me that I did make and finish another project and that was the little slipper socks that I made for, made for my eight-year-old daughter I made her a pair recently and then she needed <laughs> needed uh, another pair she thought so I have actually completed another pair of Joe's perfect slipper socks in my sparkly sock yarn that I used for an advent calendar a few years back and another hand dyed variegated yarn that I dyed and I did show those last time and I will insert a photo of them she's been wearing them they've been maybe finished for about a week or so she's been wearing them non-stop so they don't look the best anymore so I think I'll just I'll insert a photo of when she first put them on and um, I think it was Sunday morning last week and and um, they were still looking okay so I'll insert that photo and yes I have finished them they're great and she reckons she needs about four or five pairs <laughs> so I guess I will continue making them um, which is great because they're perfect for scraps, perfect for mini skeins, and perfect for just mixing and matching colours, which I really, really love. So perfect for that. Then I have one other project that I have continued on working on since last time. Um, I have a couple of other things ongoing, but not that I have touched, of course. 
but I have another project and actually this is also almost finished. This is Margit, Margit sweater by Sora Stark, a Swedish knitting designer. She made the Anna tea, which some of you might um, remember. Um, this is Margit. I'll see if you can see it. And I, for this, used a stash yarn that I had purchased probably to make something for my daughters years ago. It's a 75% cotton, 25% wool, which I found really, really good for little kids. Um, it was really heavily reduced. It says $3 per 50 gram ball on here, but I have a feeling that I had an additional discount on that. I had seven 50 gram balls of a pink and I decided um, that I was going to use that for my market and I knew that I would probably not be able to make it long sleeve. And I was sitting knitting on the, the yoke of this when I was at the yarn retreat and I did get comments are you making a poncho and I yes I realized that it looked huge and it is quite big here but not over it's not big over the shoulders but I did make it quite a bit longer down under the arm than I needed to so it does sit a bit low now on the body um, but I just um, I made that worked on that and kept going on the body until I had one 50 gram ball left plus a little bit on one uh, ball and with the 50 gram ball that I had left then I halved it in two and made the sleeves so each sleeve is 25 grams I could probably have started the sleeve you know one pattern repeat higher up um but i'm not gonna, i'm not going to redo it it still works it looks okay on unless i lift my arms up too much um so 50 gram 55 no 25 grams per sleeve and then now i started the ribbing on the body with um the little bit of yarn that i have left i might have i'm not exactly sure how much i have but i think maybe i had maybe 20 grams or something when I, maybe less. Anyway, if I get some, if I feel like the ribbing, the bottom band gets, um, if it's long enough and I still have yarn left, I'm not gonna worry about it. It would be ideal if I used up every single bit of it, but um, I'll just see. When I was making it and it was looking like a poncho and it's quite heavy because it's 75% cotton I thought I'm not ever going to wear this this is just a waste of my time but now that I've tried it on it is actually fine age ply cotton is maybe not the use full for a garment I'm not sure I can't really see when that would be a good um, fiber and weight to use the sleeves go quite a bit down on my arms which I which I like, um, but yeah, I don't know, but I have it and it's different to anything else in, in my wardrobe. So I'm sure that I would be able to wear it sometime. <laughs> so yes, that's, I mean, I'll think, I think I'll finish my socks today and I think I'll finish this today. If I don't, doesn't matter, but, um, Yes, and I'll be able to show it to you all finished next time. So that's Margit. And uh, I really like it. Of course, I did modify it a bit because I haven't followed any body or sleeve instructions. I only just did sort of the increases up here.
and that's it. Um, that is good. And you know, it's just the best feeling when you get that old stash yarn out of your stash. So I can fill it up with something else, I guess. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Put that down there. And that's the things that I have had ongoing. But then, of course, because I went to the yarn retreat um, and attended workshops, new ideas and new projects were cast on and planned. So, let's see. I might show you first the retreat bag that we got. This is the retreat bag. Um that we got um, as part of participating, I guess. Um, this bag is by um, Young Creative. Young Creative, that's, I think, I, did I get that right before? So uh, Carly made this bag and Carly is the organizer of the events. It's, like, it's just amazing quality, beautiful, beautiful bag. And in the bag, let's see, I've kept it all like it was when I got it. <laughs> There's this amazing skein from Yarns by the Bay that Liz, who was also attending the yarn retreat and was a really um, fun woman that uh, I had a really good time with. So that was also one of the highlights of, of the yarn retreat to meet Liz and do a workshop with her actually. We were both in the same workshop learning about shawls. Um, so that was great. So yes, she dyed up this beautiful, beautiful skein to match the bag. So I think she did a really good job on that. So that's in there. And then there were some mini skeins. Um, there's some, I think that's Polworth from Tandy. There's a little obsess, Obsessions yarn skein. There's a mini skein from Sally Ridgeway, who's a dyer, sort of local to me, a little bit more um, west, northwest. And she was the um, one of the retailers at, at the yarn retreat. So she had all of her beautiful hand-dyed yarn there. So one of those. And then a nice, um, squishy, not so little uh, mini skein <laughs> from White Gum Wool in a beautiful orangey colour. And yeah, so with her with Nan's beautiful um, labels and yeah, very nice. So that, that they were the little yarns and then there were all, lots of little goodies and um, sort of cards and things. There's a little Western Red Cedar um, block for keeping moths and stuff away, I guess. There's some stitch markers from Sally Ridgeway. There's some soak from the yarn bowl. Some cards and things, some discount codes. There's something you always need from the yarn in. Some wool needles and some buttons. So they're from the yarn in. What was there? Oh, and the Beedo Dads, I think is how you say this brand, a little cat stitch marker. And you know, there's some discount codes and things. So yeah, lots of um, cool stuff. There might be something else in there that I, I missed, but that's them. And then we got some stitch markers from um, Rowena Butler who was also there doing a talk. I will cover up her address. Some of those beautiful things. And then also um, 
another person at the yarn retreat was uh, Prue Raymond, who did a workshop and I got to catch up with her and, and get to know her, which was great. We had a really good time and um, we got some amazing stitch markers from her. I really love that one. Yeah, so there were a few of the goodies, probably most of them. Should I see if I can put that up there again? To be pretty. So that was the the retreat bag that we got. And on the Saturday, I was in a workshop by Dominic Trad. And it, I didn't really know much about it. I knew that it was sort of about shawls and shawl shapes. And um, the only instructions we had was to bring two different um, yarns or two different colours of, of, I think, fingering weight yarn. can't remember. So I thought we would be, you know, making a shawl and trying shaping it different ways and doing some little sample thing. But the the workshop was totally different and when you when i try to explain to someone else what we did it just sounds so not stupid but it doesn't sound all that exciting but it was it was amazing it was so much better than anything i could ever have expected like it was just yes i still understand i really enjoyed it so what happened during this whole nine to three workshop was that Dom, she sort of talked through different shawls, shawl shapes and shawl constructions and she showed samples of designs that she had made uh, of those different shawl designs and shawl shapes. So we talked about know all the different semicircular shawls circular shawls octagon shawls i think uh, rectangular shawls triangular shawls and then also different ways of of knitting them like dif knitting them in different directions and also how color work and lace and all those sort of things will fit in with different shawl shaping and different way of increasing or decreasing and we talked a lot about what shawl knitting would suit a person more depending on what they like and or dislike or what you like to wear so it was just we just we, we dove right into the mountain of shawls and time flew pass and it was great it was amazing and then we did a tiny a tiny bit of, of uh, knitting trying a, a a garter tab cast on at the end and um i i think i fell in love with all of the shawls that that dominic brought to um talk about but one that i especially fell in love was was the bromeliad shawl and the sample that Dom had was it was just really fun it was black and white and then it also had like a rainbow variegated um, yarn in there and just looked really fun both fun to wear and they looked fun but it also looked like it would be something that would be fun to knit so I cast that on and I might show you first. I, I had a few different yarns with me to the um, retreat, but I wasn't, and I, I started using them, but I, because I wasn't sure what I would be making, I just had random stuff. And the shawl that I actually decided to make, I wanted in more happy, colorful colors. But I did start. See myself again. I did start the bromeliad, bromeliad shawl. Oh, now sun's coming. At the retreat, 
with some of the, my hand dyed yarn that I had brought with me. Chocolate brown, a variegated, and a light blue. But I thought they were too similar for the shawl that I'm making. So I got home and I just sort of left it. Didn't continue on it because I was not convinced by the colour choices for this particular shawl and how it then continues. And I'm not sure if I can show you a photo, but I'll definitely, you know, you'll be able to see it when I keep working on the one that I've actually cast on now. Of course, I, I really love um, Dominic's sample that she had. And as I said, it was a white and a black and a like a rainbow variegated. And I had this in my stash. It's one of the... Um, a 100 gram advent calendar yarn that I did and I've made a jumper of this I can't remember what year it was, it must be 2019 maybe 2018 can't remember but I had this skein left from when I made the jumper so that has sort of sort of rainbow with, with, the, with, with a bit of grey and I had in an old skein of dandy sock that I've dyed a very pale grey as well. And then I had this sort of, I think it's called eggplant. It's a purple sparkly sock yarn from Kathy's Fibre. And I bought that at Bendigo one year. And I used about half a skein for a pair of socks. But I thought those three would be fun so I cast on another one <laughs> and I'm at the same point I think on this one and as you can see it's a bit more colorful and fun so this is the one that I will keep working on and you will see how that develops as um, I catch up with you again so this that was the bromeliad, bromeliad shawl by Dominic Trad. And if you ever get an opportunity to take a, a workshop with Dom, um, do it. <laughs> I said to her, about halfway through the workshop, I think, I said, look, this needs to be in a book. It was, yeah, it was, it's just a really good way to talk about shawls. And I guess if you're a nerd and you like knitting, you can just talk about those things forever. Um, and her patterns. I had I've never heard of her before, and I had never discovered her patterns. I'm so have, happy. I mean, even just for the opportunity to discover Dominique's shawl patterns, this retreat was worth it. So, yes, check out her patterns. They're on Ravelry. Um, so many fantastic shawls. And then on the Sunday. I was able to join in on um, Jessica Gore's workshop on Tuckstick. Jessica Gore's Sweater Collective. I made um, a couple of her her patterns. Uh, and uh, yes, you probably know Jess is just an amazing designer um, and a really lovely person. So I did the tuck stitch workshop and the, the tuck stitch is something that's used in her shawl Whale of a Time. So with the workshop, we got the Whale of a Time shawl pattern, but there's a swatch as a part of, of that pattern. And what we worked through in, in the workshop was the swatch. And here's mine, not 100% complete, but um, it has most of, of the different, um, not instructions, design elements in it. So there's a normal one color tuck stitch section, then there's the two color tuck stitch section, then there's doing short rows, one way and then short rows the other direction 
and then this decreasing and then this decreasing and then this increasing and that's when I stopped uh, and this here is a mistake it's not meant to look like that but I know I know that <laughs> I know and um, what to do differently when I use this technique again so I just used three little partial skeins that I had um, to try that out so that was a pretty intense workshop um, but it was lots of fun to actually try something completely new that I felt not super confident with even if in only to understand tuck stitch and how it works and um, be able to feel it and understand you know when it would be a good and suitable method to use so yes we had lots of fun on the sunday doing the tuck stitch swatch and i don't think any one of us actually completed the whole swatch on the day <laughs> um so yeah it was lots of fun so I might make a whale of a time shawl at some point, but um, not. it's not on my actual plans at the moment. Uh, I'm doing my bromeliad shawl. So I've, uh, this bromeliad shawl, I sort of got it to this part. And now there's a section with um, sort of little colored bubbles with the variegated in the dark color and um, I think I'll figure out how you do it but then I want to leave it because I want this shawl to be my um, annual leave knitting that's the plan because I don't have a lot of things with a lot of knitting to do that is cast on and, and sort of ready to knit on so that's that one so yes, once I've finished the cotton mug jumper and my socks, um, really the shawl by Dominic Trad is what I have to work on. I still have to finish my saga cardigan. Don't know when that will happen. Um, I have a blanket I'm working on and stuff like that. I have another jumper I want to start. Another, no, another cardigan. Um, but the shawl will be for my annual leave and I wanted to cast on something else because I'm finishing a garment. I wanted to cast on a garment and the cardigan that I have planned was just not, um, not just not right for how I was imagining my easy stress-free knitting for <laughs> my annual leave. So you might have seen before I showed you this yarn that I got, um, Op shopping recently it's it's a hollow chain with different blue pieces of fabric or something in it I thought that it would be cotton or something but I've started knitting up a little swatch because I want to use this I have quite a few of these balls I wanted to make a little jumper or t-shirt or something and um, so I needed a little swatch I don't know if you can see it it's it's tiny i got about 20 stitches on 10 centimeters i don't know about the row gauge but that's the stitch gauge and it looks very um shiny synthetic i don't know it could be you know viscose or something it doesn't have to be synthetic but um it is quite shiny i like it i like the texture of it i think it's fun and i think because for my holidays, I wanted something just really simple, just knit, knit, knit. Because I will have the shawl um, that will have a little bit more complex knitting in it. It has different um, textured patterns and things like that. So that will have a lot of interest. So I wanted something else that would just be plain knitting. But I thought with this yarn, because it has a bit of interest with the texture in the actual yarn, that will still make it fun interesting to knit um so i did 
just this tiny little swatch to sort of figure out what stitch gauge I have. I think I landed on about 20 on two millimeter needles. And what I can make is the Fenmont sweater, I think it is. I made it twice. I made it once in a fingering tweed yarn from Cola Girl Collective in three different colors. And I really, really like that jumper. It sits really well and I wear it quite a bit. And then I have used that pattern also to make a, a jumper in an eight ply, in a DK weight of the Stella from Bendigo Woolen Mills, which is a much heavier um, jumper because the Stella is, I think, 50% bamboo, so it's quite heavy. Um, but it's, I think I also modified it quite a bit because I had different gauge and stuff. But it was mostly to get the shaping here right. Oh, there it falls. Um, so it has 20 stitches in the pattern. So I will use that to just make a very simple, basically a bit like this, I guess. But I think the stripes has a different stitch, a different gauge. That's why I didn't. I can't remember, but I think I used a Fenmont because I got the gauge for that. Um, so that's another thing that I will work on. So once I finish my socks completely and I finished my git, I will work on my shawl and I will work on this new garment. Um, and that will be my main things that I'll be working on. It is... Um, it, it, it is always nice when you get to the stage where you're finishing off a lot of things because it opens up for, for new ideas and you will have you have time to to work on new exciting projects. I really, really like that. And I'm just trying to uh, not cast on everything. <laughs> I'm trying to think that also this will give me um, time to do some sewing and some spinning and other things that I haven't been doing for some time. So yes, I have a couple of weeks of work to do and a lot of work um, to be ready to take two weeks off. And I'm taking two weeks off absolutely everything, which will be amazing. And I'll work on my shawl and I'll work on my new cast on jumper. I think, I mean, things can change in the next two weeks, but that's the plan. And then after that, um, I am looking forward to spending a lot of time out here in the studio. I'm going to start doing my advent calendars that I am doing this year. They're still up on the rosehipisland.com website. And um, I'll be getting my sewing machine and overlocker all set up and ready to go again. And I just recently bought some more fabric. So yes, I'm really really excited to get back into the sewing and I do have a lot of spinning that I want to do as well so yes look out um, things will ramp up and get crazy second half of this year I'm sure but that's all that I really had to share with you today I'll have a look yes that's that's all that I had put here on my desk to talk about and I just really wanted to catch up and um, tell you how amazing I thought the yarn retreat was. And if I met you at the yarn retreat, um, I love being there with everyone. And I hope that you had a really good time too. And uh, really, I'm really, <laughs> you know, it's really awkward, not awkward, but it's really weird because I don't really see the faces behind names very often if people order yarn from me or if there's someone I follow on Instagram often I don't actually know what the person looks like so there might have been people that I have had some sort of contact with on social media but I wouldn't be able to know so I hope that, you know if if um, if I met you and you had followed me or bought yarn from me before that um, I wasn't too weird. 
someone did say that I was shorter than they expected. So yes, I'm not a tall person. Anyway, um, that's all for me. If you would like to follow along with me on Instagram, you can find me there as Rosie Island. And I'm Rosip Island on Ravelry, and also there's a page for Rosip Island on Facebook. And as I said, my hand dyed yarn you can find at rosipisland.com. And I do have some advent calendars left there. And this year I'm using the white gum wool um, silk sock. So it's the white gum wool, wool and silk in a fingering weight yarn with a higher twist than the the regular or uh, original white gum wool. Okay, every, everyone, that's that's it. That's all. It's getting darker. It's time to move on. I have some cinnamon scrolls to attend to, so I'll go inside and do that. And I think I need a, a hot tea as well. I can feel it in my throat. Okay, well, until next time, I hope that you are well and that you have a lot of time for the things that you enjoy and that you stay safe and uh, I will see you next time. Bye, take care.